Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is I, the Aquel Icon. Why isn't this working now? Hold on one second. Logging in. <laughs> Technical stuff. Excellent. And start. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. All right, return to meeting. That's this one. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the FRL icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. I don't know why this whole thing is here. Let me get, oh, that's not going to work. One second. Cool. Ah, what was that? Oh, no. That's not going to work. All right, that's fine. We're cool. We're good. All right, everyone. This is the F4 icon. Sean Jazz Stevens here, welcoming you to the F4L headquarters podcast. And I want to say thank you, everyone, for joining us here tonight. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Um, yeah. Thank you for joining us here tonight on the F4 Headquarters podcast as we have a very special guest coming in tonight very shortly. Um, and this should be pretty epic as we have someone who has um, been the most requested guest we have had in a long time. Uh, he is an individual who is someone who has done a lot on our shows. And uh, we believe he is going to be the next big thing in the UFC. Um, we're going to welcome Big E Elijah Furton very shortly. Uh, it is dark where I am, however, as you guys can see, if you're joining me early. What I am going to do is quickly turn on my light. I will be right back. That's right, folks. I'm back. Hope you guys are all doing well. As I said, uh, this should be a pretty epic show um, as we are going to be bringing Big E Elijah Purton on. He is just wrapping up all of the things he had to do. He just got done his weigh-ins for his very first wrestling, oh, sorry, his MMA tournament he is doing tonight. As I said before, he is a brilliant young man who is doing quite a lot of big things. And we frankly can't wait, and we are very proud to have him uh, come to the show. We're glad that he took some time. He's a very busy young man, which is why we haven't been able to do this sooner. Um, so this should be pretty awesome. Um, we're just going to wait for him to come in. He's scheduled to come in on, on about 11 o'clock, my time. It's 8 o'clock his time, so... Um, he is wrapping up eating, I was told, and he's going to be coming in just shortly. Um, anyone who's watched his matches on our show, well, for one thing, of course, you've watched his matches on our show, considering he's one, again, one of the most requested people we have on the headquarters. <laughs> so it should be pretty epic. I'm just getting confirmation that Champ is getting ready as we speak. So it should be pretty cool. Yeah. 
Indeed. <laughs> Pretty dark setting, isn't it? All right. Huh. One second, folks. Going dark again. on the fan oh you know it's funny as i <laughs> i muted i turned my video off but you guys can obviously hear me turning the lights on it is right brighter is it not excellent so as you guys know i coincide this with um my with the actual headquarters and the podcast and so forth. So it should be really cool. Uh, we've done this before and it will be epic <laughs> as it should be. <laughs> uh, we're looking forward to this tonight as Biggie is a very um, respectful young man. And I was told that he is very excited to come here as he should be. He's a rising star. He's going to get to have to get used to it, I suppose. We're going to go ahead and fix my background. <laughs> background. There we go. That's better. There we go. That's better. Epic. There it is. So this is our background we use tonight as it is Big E's turn to come to the VF World Headquarters podcast. And he will be joining us shortly. And um, those of us, those of you guys who have not seen him on our shows, um, it's not far from how he really truly is in real life. He is a force to be reckoned with. Um, he could tell you himself <laughs> why he is a force to be reckoned with. Um, and we're looking forward to learning more about what goes into becoming the beast that is the King of Bling, Big E, Elijah Burton. Um, he is a tremendous young athlete. Uh, those people who've listened to me time and time again, um, you know that I am someone who um, I only um, say the things that I believe, and I only champion those I ch I truly believe in. And on my podcast. You know, several times Big E has been on the list of people who are future UFC champions. Speaking of which, it could be him now. Dude. <laughs> testing one, testing two. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, look at that. There he is. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. You can hear me? Yep. Oh, look at that. Technical difficulties. No problems there. We're already off to a good start. That's a good thing. <laughs> How's it going, champ? You doing good? Yep. Awesome. You excited? Uh-huh. Yeah? Awesome. Speaking of the king of bling, with the chain, there it is. There he is. Uh -huh. Nice. How much does that thing weigh? I don't know. Um, if you wore that today in weigh-ins, would you have not have qualified? <laughs> Probably, right? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, of course, as you can see, I am you are joined by the great King of Bling himself, Big E, Elijah Fred. I said we had a big guest. Well, 
can't get bigger than Big E himself. <laughs> so, welcome, Big E, to the F World Headquarters podcast. Isn't it fantastic? As he's got his little wall of fame behind him, which is going to grow. You're going to have to get a bigger wall, I think. Much bigger Maybe. wall. Maybe. You're going to have to get a bigger wall. Maybe a bigger room. Just have a room just for your trophies. Right? <laughs> All right, cool. Well, everyone, you've heard me babble about this young man for plenty. So maybe it's time for me to stop babbling about him and let him talk about himself. So, Elijah, why don't you tell the people why, any of those people under a rock somewhere, why they should know who you are? Um, I'm just out there doing um that thing, um, boxing, that wrestling, racing, that stuff. A lot of stuff, indeed. Yeah. Very busy young man. He's almost as busy as I am. Um, and, and he's got the mohawk to go, too. You know, if I could rock the mohawk, I would totally do so. But unfortunately, my hair just grows all over the place. It, I would do the <laughs> mohawk, and it would just grow all over the place. It would not work out well. Just like I want long hair, and I can't have long hair either. It just goes up. And, <laughs> you know, I have to be able to get under doorways and stuff. It just doesn't work that way. You get how that works, right? <laughs> awesome. Thank you for laughing at my jokes. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bud. So, you know, this is a very laid back thing, as you can, as you probably have already heard um, and, and whatnot. So we're just going to have a chat and talk about what you've done so far, compared notes and all that fun stuff and talk about you beating everybody up on our show. First of all, are you feeling OK after being thrown through the cage in the last match? People <laughs> actually asked me if you're OK. Yeah, I'm OK. Okay, he's okay. He fell 50 feet through the cage, but he's okay, folks. As you can see, he looks fine to me. Um, <laughs> yes, people were legitimately worried and concerned that you were thrown through the cage in the last match with actually one of your friends, I believe. You know Ryder? Ryder Lockwood, I believe. Do you know him? Uh, I think so. Yeah, well, you'll get to know him considering you guys, you've got been at war on our shows. Speaking of which, have you watched any of your matches from our shows? Yeah, I have. Yeah, what is your favorite match so far? Um, <laughs> I don't know a lot of them. Um, ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so. Do you like the matches where you end really quick? Or do you like the ones where you go like almost half the day? Uh, I like the ones that maybe go half the day, more entertainment. I like so. that. That's a good answer. I like that. I know that, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many times we had Iron Man matches with you and we had to go into sudden death matches. Sudden death in an Iron Man match because an hour wasn't good enough. Anyway, <laughs> it's okay. That's what performers do, right? We f we have the heart of the fighters and we fight, right? Yeah. That's right. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Now, you do football, right? American football. Mm-hmm. Okay. You also do motocross, right? Is it motocross or is it racing? And what's the uh, difference? I don't, I don't do motocross racing like anymore. Um, I used to. But now I'm racing uh, little quarter midgets. For those people who don't know what that is, tell them what that is. All those people who don't know what you just said. <laughs> so it's pretty much like a sprint car, you know, without the wings and slower. Here's a picture of me. Ah, gotcha. Yep. Mario yeah. and Dreddy, eat your heart out. Uh, the, the guy I met one time, Dale Earnhardt Jr. You ever hear of that guy? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he was uh, the son of Dale Earnhardt. He was a race car driver. He did something called NASCAR. I don't know if you ever heard of that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, Dale Earnhardt Jr., he's going to have to watch out because in a few years, he might have to worry about you. Is that what you're going to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. So all, all honesty, so... Of all the things you do, what's your favorite thing you like to do the most? Like, out of all of the activities you have? 
I like boxing the most. Boxing? What about yep. boxing do you like more so than the others? Um, the, like, moves we get to do, um, that kind of stuff, um, yeah. Now, when you say boxing, you're talking about regular boxing, not kickboxing, right? Um, I do, like... You do kickboxing, too, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. I know, I do my homework. <laughs> It's okay. I did that too. So I get it. Two peas in the pod right here. And yeah. <laughs> cool stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Now, have you had an actual boxing match? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I have one tomorrow. I just did my weigh ins today. Yep. And how, how did that go? How was weigh ins? Good. Have you done those before in other sports or is this your first time doing weigh ins? No, I've done them a lot. Yeah, what's your especially yeah. in wrestling? Yeah, definitely in wrestling. I know how that works too, as you know. I did that too. Um, what what are your thoughts on weigh-ins? Out of curiosity, huh? What are your thoughts on weigh-ins? Like, do, when you go to weigh-ins, is it awkward thing for you, or do you think, or does it not even matter to you anymore? Just like let's just get this over with. Let's go. Um, it doesn't bother me. Um. You know, well, are you one of those, for the fight. Yeah. Do you, are you like the Conor McGregor? You go out there and just sit there and pose for everyone and t get all the flash of photography going. Is that you? Or are you the guy that like, okay, really do quick and hide in the corner? Which one are you? I'm the guy that's Conor McGregor. That's right. That's right. That's what we like to hear. You can't yeah. get the, you can't get the bling if you're going to hide in the corner, right? Yeah. That's right. If someone who's going to wear a big chain like that, you know he's going to be showing everything up. He's good like that. It's confidence. Would you say that you're confident for tomorrow or no? I am very confident for tomorrow. I think you should be, too. I'm afraid for everybody, honestly. I hope they're going to be okay. <laughs> uh, just, uh, oh, my, Somebody wanted me to remind you, you know, there is no cage involved, correct? Yeah. You're not no, in the cage tomorrow, right? No okay, cage. good. Because someone asked me, one of the one of your fans <laughs> asked me to make sure you don't throw anybody through the cage like you'd like to. So try to refrain from throwing anybody through any cages this weekend. We appreciate it. They would appreciate it. Okay. Okay. So Biggie promises not to throw anyone through a cage so they cannot be worried now. There won't be any cages. There's no cages. Just through the floor, no. maybe. Just through the yep. floor. Oh. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. All right, so now you're on the West Coast, right? Opposite side of us. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Awesome. What's the, have you been in that area your entire life or no? Yeah. Nice. What's the furthest you've traveled for competitions or whatnot? Um, like, I'm normally staying here for competitions, but maybe like, um, I think we gone to L.A. once, like twice, twice. Hmm. All right, cool. That'll change in time, you know. When once you'll start growing and getting even more out there, because then everyone's gonna be hounding to go and challenge you. What do, What do you think is important to be a challenger and to be when you go into it when you prepare for a, to go into a match with MMA versus all the other things? What 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 is your mindset and how do you prepare for that? Um, I'm just getting warm at the start, getting mm -hmm. my blood flowing, um, mm -hmm. and then I go out there and beat them up. <laughs> yep, that sounds about right. I was watching you get I, I think I was watching your training thing you were getting whacked and laughing at the person whacking you is that a common thing do you usually laugh at people who are beating you up <laughs> is that a common thing no I saw something that you were getting beat up and laughing about it I thought that was that was comical so it's good <laughs> all right cool now you know, clearly, now when you're doing these tournaments and stuff like that, obviously, you know, this it's a very physical thing, right? Have you ever been injured in any of these fights yet? Um, this is your first MMA fight, right? No, I've done many more. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but um, yeah. Here's here's one of my uh medals, uh, uh silver medal from mm -hmm. one of my fights. But I don't, I don't remember any of getting injured. That's a good thing. Oh you... um, yeah. I this kid got me an arm bar and I hurt my arm pretty bad. Oh, did you? Did you have to face him again? Huh? Did you ever have to face him again? No. No? Do you think that you would want to face him again? And just yeah. neck, get him in the armbar? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. Now, um, you know, you seem very calm, cool, and collective. Very peaceful, right? When you go to a mat, what is your mindset with the person across the, across the mat from you? Are they your friend? Are they your enemy? Or are they just there? They're just my friend. Um, the, the before friends. the fight, before the fight, um, not friends with them, but after the fight, yeah, definitely. Cool, awesome stuff. See, he, he's he's you know he's cool like that. That's, that's how a champion does. That's good. Conor McGregor does that stuff too. Yeah. So good stuff. I hear that you're a wrestling fan. Is that true? Huh? I heard you're a wrestling fan. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so when you heard, when you started doing wrestling and you said, oh, I want to do wrestling, and they started showing you what wrestling you're doing currently is versus what wrestling is you've seen, were you surprised? Um, like, did you know there's a difference between the wrestling you're doing versus the wrestling you've seen on TV? Uh, I feel like there was a difference, yeah. Were you hoping to do like you know monkey flips and and do back body drops and do drop toe holds and stuff? Yeah, I was wishing to do that until the rules. The super RKO off the top rope. Yep. Yep. I bet. I know. I not only have I seen that, a friend of mine has also seen that, and he doesn't want to be in a match with you because he's afraid you're going to hurt him. <laughs> He just got back to wrestling. I don't know if you ever heard of a guy. Not a guy. He's a Randy Orton guy. You never heard him, probably. He's just, you know, some guy. Uh, he's Orton. just, he, huh? Yeah, Randy Orton. He's just some guy. He doesn't want to face you, though. He's afraid you'll hurt him again. No, but sir, all fairness, though. Um, so, what got you into pro wrestling? Because that's an interesting topic. A lot, a lot of people do talk about wrestling willingly. Um,. I think my like my dad asked me if I wanted to do it. Um, I mm -hmm. said, "Yeah, I'll try it out." Um, yeah. Do you like wrestling? Yeah. Yeah. Not as much as boxing, though, right? Huh? Not as much as boxing. Uh. Um, yeah. It's okay. You can like boxing more than wrestling. I don't get offended. It's okay. I did boxing too. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool. Who's your favorite um, UFC fighter? Who's my favorite UFC fighter? Yeah. Oh, that's a tough one. All right. So I'm old school, as you could probably guess. Um, <laughs> I got a few friends. See, here's the thing. Are we going to go with like people? I'm a little partial because I have friends of mine who have done UFC. Um, I don't know if you guys, you know, Ken Shamrock, you ever hear of him? I think I have once. He's one of the pioneer guys in UFC. Him and his brother, Frank Shamrock, were early UFC guys. Mm -hmm. um, Conor McGregor isn't bad. He's very um, charismatic in, in nature. <laughs> Currently, I think Conor McGregor is pretty flashy. Yeah. Um, of course, my other my other buddy who just tried UFC uh, was a little bit embarrassed by that. It didn't work out so well for him. He just went back to wrestling, by the way. Uh, but it's okay. We'll, we'll forget about poor Phil. Uh, but um, yeah, I say currently, I, I really I think Patty Patty the Patty Pemblet is pretty good too. You ever see Patty the Batty Pemblet out of the UK? I don't, I don't think so. He's all right. He's a, he's a very charismatic person. I, see, I'm a person who likes the showmanship. I like someone who has more than just, I'm going to go to the ring and fight and walk away. I like someone who can stand out, like yourself. Yeah. Because I can see the showmanship in you, regardless of whatever, if whatnot. You are quite the showman. I saw the, I saw the uh, weigh-ins. 
I know. I know how it goes. And you know what? That's a smart thing because you know what? Everyone who does that, that shows, that gives, a, sends a message to everyone at the field, at the uh, tournament, you're not going to mess around. You're not someone who worries about much. That's a good thing. But I like, yeah, I like Conor McGregor currently. I also like Patty McPemblet. Uh, I mean, Kane Velasquez was a beast. <laughs> um, Brock Lesnar, I guess, is okay. But he's not in the UFC anymore. They won't let him. He's in the WWE. He is back in WWE. You're right. So is CM Punk, my good buddy. <laughs> yep. Anyway. Yeah, he tried that UFC thing, too. That might not have worked out so well for him, but... Hey, at least he tried, I guess. Yeah. He gets the, the old participation trophy, I guess. <laughs> if you want to say it that way. But anyway, um, so who are your favorite wrestlers? Favorite wrestler. Or, or who are your favorite UFC fighters? Mine currently right now would be uh, Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz. Is he still fighting Nate Diaz? I don't think so. That's okay. Nate Diaz is a beast. But yeah. Nate Diaz is tough. Um, his brother's not bad either. Nate Diaz is tough. Um, early, um, he, he had some great wars with Randy Couture, and BJ Penn is pretty beast, too. Um, all those guys. Tank Abbott. Um, you know, those guys, guys. Chuck Liddell. Oh. Actually, yeah. Chuck Liddell might be a little upset. You might have taken his hairstyle. I don't know. He might be a little upset you took his hairstyle, but you know what? I got it from him. You got it from him. Uh, and you know what's funny is when we did our open MMA tournament, I think that was your first time on our show, uh, you had to face some of those people. And <laughs> and you should have heard the things that got called when you had several people tapping out. That was very amusing to me, especially when they get to see who made them tap out. That makes it even more funny to me. Um, I told Randy earlier today, I said, you were afraid, just remember, you were afraid of fighting this kid. <laughs> so now, you know, now you know someone's afraid of you. Yep. But anyway, <laughs> cool stuff. Uh, so going back to the wrestling thing, uh, who are your favorite wrestlers and why? Um, I think maybe, uh, in the WWE. Um, or whoever you don't have to stick. If you're an AEW guy, you could be an AEW guy if you want. No, I don't really like AD, AEW. Um, spoken like a true champion, that makes me feel proud. Thank you, appreciate that. Anyway, go ahead. Um, maybe, maybe like John Cena, some stuff like that. Do you still watch wrestling or no? When you have time, uh, I mean, you're a busy man. Yeah, I, I do sometimes. Mm -hmm. I see. Have you ever been to a live wrestling show? Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to a live wrestling show? Oh uh, yeah, once. Once. Yeah. And, and what was? It? Do you remember the match, the card at all? Do you remember the matches on the card? Um, one of them was like um. Randy Orton and someone else. Mm -hmm. Um, Drew McIntyre was on there. Mm -hmm. He's tall cool. though. He is tall. He's he's very tall. Um, <laughs> yeah. It's all I remember. I I always found it amusing whenever I run into people, and uh, I'm reminded how short I actually am. <laughs> uh, I'm only six feet. I look like I'm a giant next to a regular person. But then when the guys like Drew McIntyre would come over and take a picture, or a friend of mine, Taylor Maine, he used to be a wrestler, uh, but now he's an actor. He he played Michael Myers in the Rob Zombie Halloweens. Oh, he's man. six foot. He's six foot nine. Jeez. And when I'm next to him, it looks like I'm sitting down, but legit he towers over me so i'm reminded really quick how tall i really am actually a lot of spoiler alert a lot of the guys who were either i was not long ago i was working uh, as you guys as you probably already know i work with a bunch of horror people 
Uh, several of the Jasons tower over me, too. And I'm always reminded how short I actually am. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. I'm still not, <laughs> I'm not I'm still it's not about the size of the, the fighter. It's about the fight of the, the heart of the person within. So they even they don't mess with me. <laughs> It's cool though. They're they're nice people though. Um, I asked that because um, I remember my first time watching wrestling, and that was when I kind of decided that was what I was going to do. And I was about seven years old. How old are you? Nine. Nine. Awesome. So two years ago, in your time, <laughs> when I was seven. I went to my first live wrestling show, and the, what I remember is all the card, but I remember the first show, match on the card was what made me a fan, and it wasn't the main event, which was Hulk Hogan and the big boss man, whatever. The opening match was two people you probably never heard of because it's way before your time, but it was a guy named Leaping Lenny Poffo. And a guy named Steve Lombardi. Now, Leaping Lenny Poffo would turn into a guy named The Genius. He used to, And the gimmick was the worst thing ever. He'd go out and read these poems that he wrote on a Frisbee. And he'd throw the Frisbee into the audience. And then the fans usually threw the Frisbee back. You know how it goes. Steve Lombardi, who, you know, was just a nobody, but he would turn into be the Brooklyn brawler, which was the guy that everyone, lo he loses to basically everybody back in that time. Now it was easy to like the main event, which was Hogan, the boss man, but the first match on the card, feeling the electricity of the people around me and knowing what those people must have felt in the ring. That's when I said, little me at seven years old, I'm already short and I was skinnier than you are. Actually, you're not skinny. You got the, I've seen the guns. I, I know what you got. You know, I was a skinny little kid, skinny little kid, but I was a nightmare, but that's okay. Um, but in general, that's when I decided that's what I was going to do. And I did just like, I think you're going to do a lot of things too. So that being said, what are your plans? What do you think? You, where do you see yourself doing down the road? What, what is the plans for Big E, Elijah Burton? Oh, um. Other than having all the bling that there is to bling. You know what you should do? You should wear all of your trophy necklaces to the ring. All right. You probably wouldn't make it to the ring. <laughs> Weigh you down. You have to crawl to the ring. Too much oh. weight. <laughs> Definitely wouldn't qualify. I got to see myself maybe like uh, UFC. Um. I said that too, by the way. I said I say I see you in the UFC, as you may or may not have heard. I said that. Mm -hmm. and I, I would try to go to the WWE. You would try to go to the WWE. Yeah. W what about the WWE intrigues you? Huh? Do you like Do you like performing? Is that why? Uh yeah. Yeah. When you go to a ring. Well, when you go to the competitions, do you feel the energy from the crowd or do you just focus on the job at hand? Um, I need to focus what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. And how do you prepare? Like do you, when you go to the tournaments, obviously, you don't know officially who you have to face. Right. Because it's several people. Right. In a tournament. Yeah. yeah. So when you're preparing for that. Like, do you do you, are you familiar with the same people you face all the time, or are there new people who are going to be there? Do you know? Um, uh, I don't know who I'm going against this time, mm -hmm. but um, last two times, um, I uh went against one of the same person, yeah. Are you going to have to face this person next time? This time? Oh, uh, no. She's uh, cutting weight right now. Do you fight with the girls? Yeah. Good for you. That's okay. Hey, they're tough. <laughs> don't, <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to mess with Ronda Rousey either. Ronda Rousey is one, one of the toughest women I know. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyone, I, I, I told people before, um, I said, listen, you want to mouth off to Ronda Rousey? She could beat half of the locker room right now. I wouldn't be mouthing off about Ronda Rousey. <laughs> I've seen her, how nasty she can be. But I also seen she could be very nice, too. So mm-hmm. that respect factor. By the way, you know, I've seen, you know, you sweeping up the floors at the dojo. or Actually, what do you call the center where you practice? What do you when you go to practice your martial arts? What is that to you? What do you guys call that? Uh, the mats. The um, mats. Just because everyone has like a, they call their things either a center or a studio. Um, I call we called it a dojo where we practice our martial arts. Uh, I don't know oh, what you guys I, call them. I thought you were talking about like the mats. Uh, we call it like the gym. The uh, gym. Okay, I've heard that term too. Cool. I was just curious, just because I know everyone has a different, like, what they call their area. We've always called it a dojo, but I saw that you were helping them sweep the mats and stuff like that, which is very good and smart, by the way, to clean the mats, especially um, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, because that's a lot of rolling around and stuff like that, right? I'm not doing jiu-jitsu um, with the gi, but... Um... I'm still kind of doing jiu-jitsu, like without a gi. Mm-hmm. I see. Uh, out of curiosity, so when you do these tournaments, what do, what do you, what is your favorite way to win? Do you like the submissions? Do you like the points? What do you like to do in the tournaments? Um, I like to like um hit them real hard. Um, <laughs> this time I'm gonna try to like get them get a TKO by like um hitting their liver hard, that kind of stuff. So you want to do like Brock Lesnar, just get them to the ground and just pound on them. Yeah. That was kind of that was kind of his style. Take them to the mountain and just pound them. That was mm-hmm. his style. <laughs> Anyone who ever watched a Brock Lesnar fight saw it was the same thing. Take them to the mat. And you know what helped him with that is his wrestling background. Because yeah. before he did that, he was an NCAA champion before mm-hmm. going to the to going before going to pro wrestling and before going to wrestling wrestling and before going to the UFC. And they mm-hmm. laughed at Brock Lesnar, and he lost his first UFC fight. Did you know that? I don't think so. Well, now you do. <laughs> yeah. And knowing's half the battle. G.I. Joe. Now, do you get to watch a lot of television or anything like that? Um, not a lot, but yeah. yeah. When you do get, what do you? What's what? What's like a downtime for you? What do you like to do to relax and chill out? What is something that you enjoy doing when it's not sport related, or is that how you relax? <laughs> um, maybe like um, um, I would play this uh video game. Um, it's like um Madden. It's a football game. Mm-hmm. You play yeah. video games too? Yeah, once in a while. Do you play the do you play the wrestling game and play as yourself and beat everybody up? <laughs> have you done that yet? Other people have. <laughs> Did you know that you could do that? Um, I only I don't think um uh, you didn't know you could do that? <laughs> well or you don't have the game. I don't I don't think I have the game. Oh, we could, might be able to fix that. <laughs> Interesting. We might have to fix that one. But anyway, <laughs> well, once you do, once you get that game, if you get that game, you are a downloadable character. You can download and play as yourself in the game. I know people who do play as you, and you've already won 700 titles with other people. On our show, when we run the show, you have won both of the main titles on both rosters. Uh, what is what are your thoughts on that? Have you seen all you know you've said you've seen some of the matches, right? Yeah, I've seen some of them. That's cool. <laughs> Have you seen any of them that you are worried in the ring with? Like you think that I'm gonna lose this one, hands down. I'm in trouble. Um have you know. ever been surprised by one of your victories or no? Um I've been surprised about I think one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have you ever been upset by losing on one of our shows? 
Um, hasn't happened a lot, but granted, it does happen. I guess everything happens to sometimes. Yeah. Can't win it all, right? I mean, you just got thrown through a cage, the last one. Yeah. Um, Mick Foley wouldn't even done that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't, I don't think I watched one that I lost. It's okay. Uh, you know, yeah. it, it was a, it was not that many. Oh, honestly, <laughs> uh, you got quite a few victories over there, and. As you know, you're also going to be back in 2024, one of the uh, premier people. And now, when we started you on our show, you were on the Dream Masters beat, uh, telling that universal side of things because you're wrestling and you, the fact that you there's no sport you can't play and do well in. That's why you were in that division. Uh, but my son and I, after seeing that there's basically no one in that division that's going to compete with you other than like one person. I said, there's only one other place we could put him, and that's the BA MMA division, which is where we moved you to. You had the title on one show, and then basically said, I don't need this one, gave that title up to win the title on the other one um, in your premier show on that. So what does you think that indicates? Because, you know, we don't play that. <laughs> Did you know that we don't play the game? <laughs> uh, I can't um do you know yeah, do you... I, I knew that you guys didn't play the game my dad told me that um mm -hmm. that's true your dad's right and by the way your dad's awesome people tell your dad he's awesome people <laughs> you. and tell your mom she is an epic name i might have to you might have to make that a wrestling name that is a fantastic name right there you all have fantastic names tell me the story of your name do you know the story of your name um I don't know. You know, fun. Another fun fact for you. Uh, way back, way, way back in the day, in the school days when I was your age, now I feel really old. Um, we had a thing called pen pals back in the day because it was no social media or anything like that. Where you'd write to yeah. other kids in other schools. And a teacher that we just got when I was in elementary school, which is I think we were in like first or second grade maybe she just came from cedar riot cedar rapids iowa and she had us writing back and forth to the school where she was teaching and we were attached to this you know basically what a pen pal was is you, your class would write to one person in that class and you would write back and forth pen pal mm -hmm. and the person who i was writing back and forth with was also named elijah and yeah, yeah and I, we were going back and forth, got to, you know, and then even after that class was over, because, you know, you move up in grades, we continued writing back and forth because he was a good person and stuff like that. We enjoyed writing back and forth. And then he told me he was moving to California because he was going to be an actor. And I knew that he did some acting and modeling here and there. And so the long story short is my friend, who was Elijah, his last name was Wood. And... For the longest time, my pen pal just happened to be Elijah Wood, who you might know from maybe the Lord of the Rings, or um, he was Frodo Baggins in Lord of the Rings, or several hundred other things that Elijah Wood's been in. So I know the name Elijah, which is why it's it's funny that your name is also Elijah, and a good friend of mine's name is Elijah. My middle name um was like uh from my uh, dad's best friend. That's, That's awesome. Hard. So your real name's from your dad's best friend? Um, uh, my middle name. Oh, your middle name. Okay. Cool. So the king of bling. <laughs> That's awesome. No. That's awesome. Yeah, you know, it's 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 it, what's awesome is that you live you make your name your own, you know, and you you kind of chart you know carve your own way in history so whatever the name is based upon it's whatever you make the name after that you know philosophy i know right how dare i be philosophical at eight o'clock at night anyway um what else want to say here so back to wrestling did you know that i wrestled a long time ago 
Probably. Okay. <laughs> I know, right? Dun dun dun. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, fun story. So way way back when I wanted to become a pro wrestler, I um well first obviously I went to wrestling school, which is what you have to do to become you know a good wrestler. Mm -hmm. The wrestling school I went to was in my neck of the, was in my 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 state was probably one of the best schools in the round and some people who went to that school I, I don't know if you ever heard of some of our fellow my of other um graduates of our school I don't know if you ever heard of Triple H you ever hear of that guy yeah or China you ever hear of China <laughs> well anyway they were uh students of Killer Kowalski, who was my trainer. Mm. So he trained a lot of people. And that's actually how I became as talkative as I am, because I am not as talkative as I seem. I heard you were shy. Is that, How true is that? Shy of I heard you were quiet. You're not quiet. You're okay. You're, you've got the stupid, you've got the Randy Orton uh, uh, appeal of yourself. You're good, right? I think you're all set. You're good. You're golden. Anyway, but anyway, I had to learn to be a good talker because of the training I got at Killer Kowalski School, and I became a pro wrestler. I started six months before I graduated high school, and my first job in wrestling was a place called Old was an old school ECW. Ever hear ECW? Mm -hmm. It's okay if you haven't been, because that's before your time too. Oh, I think so. Well, my first boss in wrestling was a guy named Paul Heyman. You ever hear of that guy? Mm -hmm. Okay. So my first job at 19 years old out of high school was working for ECW. And that was when I won my first title from Just Incredible. And that was the end of that company because it closed. Go figure. Then I would work for Ring of Honor, where I would team with two guys you might have heard of, CM Punk. We were the mm -hmm. original Straight Edge Society. And a guy named AJ Styles. You ever hear of that guy? Yeah. Really good friend of mine. <laughs> really cool guy, too. And that would be kind of several little areas like that. And eventually, I would find my way around. And that's how that worked. Then I get injured. <laughs> and long story short, up until 2000. I took a creative job for WWE and I worked for the creative team for the WWE to launch that long story short. So basically my job was to kind of write the storylines and kind of help the guys with characters. One of the guys I worked with, a really good friend of mine, was a guy named Bray Wyatt. You ever hear of that guy? Yeah. Well, Bray Wyatt, they had me help. There you go. Smart man, drink water. Because I know I'm drinking, too. That's the smart man. Stay hydrated. <laughs> Bray Wyatt, um, I wanted to do a character, and we came up with this thing called The Fiend. Do you ever watch any of that stuff? Yeah, I heard one. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest stuff we liked. But anyway, um, when, I, when he left in January, I also left uh, to focus on other things. But... To answer your story, the long story short, yes, I worked in wrestling and I worked for the WWE in the creative side of things. So a lot of the guys you like, I know. <laughs> Even more of a fun story. It's a small world because the guys that, you know, people like you yourself watch now, like I remember early in my career, like a lot of us, I was teaming with a guy named Lazarus. And we had to take on the team of Randall Orton Jr. and the prototype, who you know better as Randy Orton and John Cena now. The guy who was Lazarus was a guy you know better as Batista. <laughs> yeah. And that was one of those cross-promotion things. So I have worked with some of the best in the business. And, um, you know, I'm very lucky to do that because that was something I always wanted to do, much like I know you have a lot of goals and dreams, and you too will do a lot of those things. So, 
I think that's awesome. And next year, you know, I'm going back to doing that thing. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Anyway. So if you're you guys are in, in California, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So maybe the next time wrestling comes to town, maybe we're gonna have to get you guys tickets there, huh? <laughs> you guys can say you've seen the icon live, huh? Mm-hmm. Anyway. Anyway. Smart, drink water. Water is good. That is water, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Just making sure. Yeah. You know, can't 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 be doing any none of that prime stuff on here. Logan Paul is not going to watch this show. You already beat him up enough. He has won someone, someone you beat way too many times, actually. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, what else can we say here? Are you having fun, first of all? Uh, yeah. Good. Is this easier than you? Is this everything you thought it was going to be, or is this easier than you thought it was going to be? Yeah, it's easier. It is easier, right? By the way, I love your sweatshirt. Thank you. Is that Under Armour? Um, yeah. That's Under Armour, right? Yeah. That's they used to when they were starting out, they did a lot of our soccer jerseys when I played soccer back in the day. Mm-hmm. As you know, I played soccer too. I was an athlete, believe it or not. It didn't look always like this. It's fun. Uh, and I also did martial arts and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. cool stuff. Now, that being said. What else? What are the questions you have for me? I've asked you tons of questions. Yeah. What do you got? Mm. The floor is yours. Uh, um. I know there's plenty of things you must want to yeah. know. What was your favorite matchup that uh, I've done? That you have done? Oh man. So far. <laughs> well, you've had two Iron Man matches. That both went to two sudden deaths, which was insane. Because I had to call that. I had no voice at the end of either one. So thank you for that. Um, oh, man. I have to say that, all in all honesty, that when it comes to you in the ring, when you've, you've been involved with a lot of people, but especially with like um, guys like Speedy East McDonald or Ryder Lockwood, so far, you put on clinics on how wrestling should go and how to put on a show every single time. It's not an easy win to go up against Elijah Furton. It's a war with Elijah Furton. And yeah. the famous Iron Man match at WrestleMania between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, a lot of people say that that's the best Iron match of all time. But a lot of people forget there was only one point in that entire thing and you on the other hand (laughs) you rack up about 30 within five minutes of an iron man match doing your math i think the most falls i've seen you get is about 57 pinfall 57 falls in one match That's, that's crazy that's pinfalls in submissions Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart couldn't get, could only get one point, one fall. You, on the other hand, on average, you get on their average of anywhere between 27 and, like I just said, that ridiculous number. Because, you know, I guess that's how it works. But all honesty, the people who you go against, they, they are, they keep up with you. But in the end, it can only be one, right? Yeah. Now, your is that your your name in your jersey too? Oh uh, yeah, my last name. That's epic, epic. <laughs> when you go to the ring, how do you, what's your favorite part about going to the ring? Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt your questions, but what's your favorite part about going to the ring? Um, maybe like um seeing who I'm going against. Um, uh, yeah. Do you do you do you um? Yeah, that's a good question. Anyway, does that answer your question as far as your, your, my favorite matches for you? Because I mean, I think your Iron Man matches are fantastic, and 
in all honesty, I've never seen you do a match that is quick and easy. It's always just dominant. Actually, you took on our our first Grand Slam champion on our show. You took him out in, th- in about five minutes the first time you challenged him for the title. And that's not an easy task. <laughs> so, in all honesty, if you were in the tag team division and you were on both shows, you would probably be a Grand Slam champion now on our show. But you can say that you have held the top titles on both divisions. That's something you can say. And next year in the Open MMA Tournament, I'm sure you'll do okay there too. Do you like being on the show? Yeah. You like the YouTube show? Mm-hmm. You like you're seeing yourself as a video game character? Yeah. Yeah. What, what what goes through your mind when you watch that? Like, do you do you laugh at her? Or are you like yelling at the screen? I've heard stories about people watching their matches. Let me tell you. <laughs> I kind of um laugh um like uh turn myself on a little bit though. I I you know it's okay because I know people who are older than you who do that. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, what do you think of the fact that you have a lot of fans you probably didn't even know you had? Like, if I was to tell you you have a fan club, does that surprise you, or you pretty much, I know? Um, um, I feel like it would maybe surprise me if it was, um, someone that I haven't known, but well, I got news for you. You have a fan club. People, uh, they call themselves the Diamond Miners because of your bling. I don't know why, but that's that's what they call themselves. Fans of Big E, Elijah Furton, call themselves Diamond Miners because of the bling factor. Uh, and I, I got a, an email from someone that told me that you are a great inspiration and that you have helped them um, grow inner strength. So... I thought I'd pass that on to you. One of the many emails I get about you that I would pass on to you, as I said I would. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I think what's interesting is a lot of times, like when you guys are on the show, people like yourself are on the show, a lot of people don't understand the impact you guys have. Because believe it or not, you yourself are an incredible person because you are a dream master. And because you're working on your goals and dreams, you're you're putting all the energy in 100% into everything you're doing. And you're a great inspiration to people everywhere. So just know that you're making an impact to people who you probably don't even know. You didn't know you had 700 fans who call themselves diamond miners until now, right? Yeah. Well, now it's 800. (laughs) So, So when I... You know, basically what I'm telling you is that you're doing great work and you do have a lot of fans and people who support you and think that you're fantastic because you are. And you're a gentleman, even the, until you get in the ring and the bell rings, because we all know the real story because we've seen it. <laughs> How close are you to the character you are on our show? Mm-hmm. Like when you go to the, <clears throat> when you go to the ring, basically it's fun and games until the r- bell rings because then it's just all over from there yeah is that Uh, pretty much how you are mm -hmm. i believe it i believe it have you seen all your entrances on our show Uh, i only seen like probably like um three matches maybe okay we'll we'll fix that (laughs) Mm -hmm. cool that's right so so far in your entrances, you've had the standard like walkout entrance. You've had one where you ride a motorcycle to the ring. And you have one now that is the king of bling stuff with the sparkles and the, the bling flashing everywhere and more chains than anyone should ever wear. But that's what you wear now and with, a, with a blingy jacket on top of that. So you sparkle to the ring. So that being said... <clears throat> Basing upon that, which one would you think would be your favorite entrance so far? <clears throat> oh, a favorite entrance? Um, 
maybe like probably that motorcycle. Yeah, maybe. I would say so. That's pretty cool. <laughs> So, back to you and your questions. You asked me about my favorite match, and I would say pretty much any match you're in because you put on clinics and wrestling every single time, and that's not something that everybody can say. I've seen you destroy Kurt Angle, and that's not an easy thing. I also saw you tap out Brock Lesnar, so that's not an easy task either. And Matt Riddle's not even a question in all fairness. So, And actually, going back to that question, my favorite thing was that some one of the people I know in the MMA world, Matt Riddle, uh, had said, there's no way that kid would ever beat me. I put him in a match with you, and you had him tapping out, like, really quick. So I appreciate you tapping out Matt Riddle and proving me right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that was probably one of my favorite things, because basically you, by being you, proved me right. And that I knew you would beat him. So thank you for beating Rat Riddle for me. <laughs> Go back to you. Now, what other questions you got? Um, I know. Pressure's yeah. on, right? Yeah. I know. Remember to breathe. In through your nose and out through your mouth. You'll be okay. <laughs> it's no pressure here. Um, if you would meet one WWE wrestler, who would it be? That I don't know already? <laughs> you mean meeting a WWE guy who I don't know or someone who I've known already? Um, like whoever. Um, hmm. You know, I never really got a chance to meet Roddy Piper, and I would have liked to have worked with him. Um, I think Roddy Piper would have been fun. Um, never got a chance to see him, but he was cool. Um, that's also before your time. I guess uh, maybe Brock Lesnar. I haven't really got a chance to chat with him in a while. Uh, I would like to chat with Brock Lesnar for a little while, poke, pick his ear, and see what he thinks about everyone. Because what people see in him, what I know of him, is might be two different things. You know what I mean? Well, that goes mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So maybe him, or maybe see him Punk uh, again, my good old buddy there, and I might might ask him to come up and chat with him for a few. And uh, yeah, probably see him Punk. Maybe I haven't seen him in a little while. Maybe AJ Styles, just because of the. You know, the good times. It would be nice to, you know, chat around like we usually do in a locker room and have a good old time. But for me, that would be like hanging out with my friends. So, you know, no different than you. You would be around with us. So there you go. <laughs> Picture that scene now. <laughs> Horror <thing. laughs> Anyway, go ahead. Have you ever thought, so you said you want to be a wrestler, right? Do you yeah. know what you need to do to become a wrestler? Um, kind of like the same things that I'm doing right now. What about a pro wrestler? Um, I would, um, do it how Brock Lesnar did, wrestling, um, real CW. You're, you got you got it down right. You got the idea. Yeah. Out of curiosity, you mentioned you don't really like AEW. Why is that? Out of curiosity, what don't you like about AEW versus WWE? Um, I feel like WWE has the guys that I really like more. The stars, you mean? Mm hmm Because you've heard of those guys, right? Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to take digs. I think it's amusing when this is their, you know, you're their audience that they, those other guys like to have, you know, but yet people like you would rather see real stars than these people no one's ever heard of. So I appreciate that. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um, Fun stuff. I guess I am a little partial to WWE myself. I mean, I, you know, I think everyone, when they look at wrestling, 
there's all these companies back when i was you know a fan of wrestling there was several other companies there was wcw there was other places and in the 90s i can tell you this too everyone watched wrestling in the late 90s everyone watched wrestling during the monday night wars wcw ecw wwe everyone was watching wrestling if they say they didn't they're lying i'll tell you why and a lot of people who I don't know if you ever heard people make fun of wrestling. Do you ever hear anybody make fun of wrestling on TV? Um, I mean, <laughs> I I don't think I heard of anybody make fun of it. That's good. I have, <laughs> but anyway, that's okay. But in general, a lot of people like like this, like the other people who don't necessarily like pro wrestling usually say how fake it is or whatever else, and they make fun of it. And people who watch it are just, you know, whatever. But uh, the impact that wrestling's had on pop culture is ridiculous. Because considering um, I I grew up doing tournaments like you. I don't know if you knew that, but I did. I, I saw multiple martial arts before I even got into pro wrestling, much like you are now. So you are correct. You're in the right path. You got those boxes checked. <laughs> right, I can't put you to... I don't know... I didn't even ask you that yet. I will. But anyway, <laughs> what do, actually, let me wait a minute. What disciplines do you have? What, like, what are you trained in? What do you have for, um, what are you trained in, so, first of all, before I continue that question? <clears throat> um, what have I, like, what? So, what what discipline like karate, kenpo, judo? Like me, I did karate. Okay, I did kenpo, karate, judo. I did muay thai. I did um, chung kudu, and I did regular boxing, and then obviously wrestling. Those are my backgrounds. What do you do? Or what have uh, you done? I've done um little um BMX, um quick bikes, racing, um dirt bike racing. Uh, boxing. Okay. Cool. You done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Huh? Have you done Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Yeah. Okay. Do you do, do you do karate? No. Okay. Good. See, we're getting there. There you go. All right. Cool. I'm just trying to see what uh things you're trained in, but um, yeah. Anyway. I know I forgot what I was going to ask now. Silly me. See? We're all in the same boat here. We're good. See? We're all adults here. We're good. We're all right. Anyway, um, to get to where I, where I wanted to be, I had to do what you're doing now. So you're pretty much on the right path, which is what I was going with anyway. Um, and that was kind of where I was going with that, I guess. But um, all those things helped me develop there. Going back to you, what else you got? Did I answer the question you asked me, by the way? Mm. You don't even remember what the question was, do you? <laughs> what, favorite wrestler? My favorite wrestler. Is that what you asked me? I, I thought I asked you. Oh, I thought you did, too. Well, my favorite wrestler is AJ Styles. But... <laughs> mm. but um. But I'm a little, again, I'm partial to that because I worked with him for a long time. Um, other than that, I think CM Punk's really good too. Yeah. Undertaker, of course, you know, is the Undertaker. <laughs> um, and of course, Bray Wyatt, I thought was very underrated too. I like to rate Bray Wyatt. Those are my favorites. My favorite tag team is Demolition. You probably don't know who that is, but that's okay. Uh, they were my favorite tag team. So. Now, in wrestling, do you prefer this? Oh, that's what I, that's where we're not on the candidate because I asked you about why you don't like AEW. That's right. Yeah. See, AEW always ruins something. Silly AEW. Anyway, uh, yeah, doing good there. Doing good. Anyway, <laughs> fun stuff. All right. I've had not enough coffee yet today. It's early. All right. Okay. Now that I've composed myself, we're good. 
So, okay, what else do you have for questions? Because I, I, I have a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> um, this is how I'll answer the question quickly. That way there it, it's more easier to understand. Yeah, um, I don't have any questions. Uh, you don't have any questions. That's okay. I have plenty of questions. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, to be a pro wrestler, I went to wrestling school. Maybe, do you can do you think that you know it's a, probably a good idea to go to wrestling school versus do something like that? Like, do you and your friends go in the backyard and do that wrestling stuff in the backyard, or no? No. Good. Smart man. Look at that. You're already on your way. Don't do that. PSA, don't backyard wrestle. <laughs> um, but anyway, it, that actually brings me to a real question I have for you. So obviously you go to regular school. Is that you go to regular school? Mm -hmm. How do the kids in school uh treat like it, when you obviously the kids in school know that you do all this stuff outside of school, the the martial arts and the sports and all that stuff. Do you get along with everyone at school or or is it how does that how does that go for you? I get along with um, a lot of kids. You get along with them? Do you ever encounter anyone giving you a hard time at all? Like bullies and stuff like that? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Who? Um, yeah, okay. No, you don't have to give specific names. But what why would people do that? What do they what do they do to get to do that out of curiosity? Um really. Um, I just stay away from those kids. Um, so smart. So yeah, that's horrible. You don't shoot and be bullied anyway. I hate, as you know, I don't like bullies. <laughs> so yeah, PSA to bullies: don't mess with Big E, or else you're gonna have to deal with everybody else, and you don't want that. Trust me on that. So you go. Tell your bullies to come see me. I'll I'll fix them. <laughs> anyway, um. What else was I gonna say? So the other kids in school, they don't they they you know the ones you get along with, do they like watch you watch you do the MMA stuff and all that stuff, or are they like you know pick and choose what they support you in? How does that work? Um or do they or are the ones you train in? Do they are these your friends you train with or no? Oh uh, no. Mm -hmm. I gotcha. Who do you like when it comes for you? Where do you find most of your friends? Like, you, do your friends do you get along with the kids at football more so than the martial art kids? How does that work for you? Or does it matter? Um, I get a, I get a, um along with both of them um a lot. Cool. You know, I was watching your football game. By the way, it looks like you had a blast playing football. What, what's your favorite part about playing football? Out of curiosity. Um, being the running back and running the ball. Yeah, yeah, and and let me tell you, he can run the ball. I've seen that beast. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So now playing the playing football, obviously, I, as you, I don't know if you knew this, but I played football one season in high school because I also continued playing soccer that same time period. I never did that again because I learned my lesson. Very difficult to do both. Because you have to pick and choose. Um, but, like, since you played American football, which is what everyone knows, football America, but how do you look at, like, soccer players and things like that? Do you think there's a difference, or do you think that, you know, it, it's so far off? Like, do you know what I mean? Like, when you see other athletes, do you respect them regardless of what they do, or do you think that they should just play American football and that soccer stuff is not as hard as it looks? Um, when I see an athlete, like, um, um, I would, I feel like, um, I would notice kind of what they would do. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, um, football would be better than soccer, honestly. Yeah. Yep. Now, when you played football, did they do tackling in your football or is it flag football? Tackle. 
Okay, good. I don't know why they ever invented the other fl- the other football. It just doesn't seem right. What are your yeah. thoughts on participation trophies? Should everyone get a trophy, or should you earn a trophy? Um, I feel like you should earn one, but um, but for football, um, we get like a medal. Hmm. I get you. Cool stuff. Now. What time's your tournament tomorrow start? Um, it starts at like uh eight in the morning. Eight in the morning, awesome. There is one more one thing we got to ask. So everyone wants to know what a daily, a regular day looks like for you. So pick a day and what what is a regular routine for you and a regular day? Um. Yeah. Um. Waking up, eating my breakfast, uh, going to school, um, and then um, at four, um, I go to gym for four to seven. Mm-hmm. And then it's come home, eat dinner, probably homework, right? Yeah. Pretty simple. Cool. Do you do Do you ever wonder like how other kids just don't do any of those things. They just like play video games, or do you? Or do you like? Do you like? Do you like that kind of lifestyle though? You like doing that stuff, right? Uh, what? Like going to the sports and doing that, having that kind of a thing, going to do the gym and work on the sports. You enjoy those things, correct? Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know if you knew this, but you're a very busy young man, which is good. And there are a lot of kids your age who don't even know how to tie their shoe. Who don't even like taking the trash out, who definitely don't like sweeping their floor, I know who definitely won't do multiple things. So, what do you think? So, what do you think to, about those kids who can kind of just sit around and play video games versus you who actually does the sports that they play <laughs> on the game? Um, I mean, I feel like, um, They should probably um um stick um like um some people don't know how to tie their shoe um they would stick to that and try that every day. Good choice. See, listen to this guy. He knows. Can you, you tie your um, shoes? Huh? Do you know how to tie your shoes? Yeah. See, he can tie his shoes. Smart man. This is why we have him on our show. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, go ahead. There's a T- football player that um doesn't know how to tie shoes, and he's older than me. Um, <laughs> and um, my dad said um when he knows how to tie a shoe in front of him, um, my dad would buy him ice cream. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's a fun question, too. So, now, you've played a lot of sports. I've played a lot of sports, too. What is the most embarrassing sports story you have? Because I'm going to give you one, too. So, you tell me yours, and I'll tell you my funny, embarrassing story. You must have one. Everyone has at least one. Oh. Um, so, so, um, my last, I think it was my last fight, um, Oh, um, I was in my fight. Um, this kid, I knew I can beat him. And, um, and, uh, like, uh, he, he beat me. Um, but I was also, like, um, on antibiotic and this stuff, so. What happened? I felt like that was the most embarrassing. Because you said you thought you were going to beat him and he just came back and beat you? Yeah, everyone yeah. knew. Um, everyone knew I was going to beat him, but you ended up losing. Did you take yeah. the dive? You took the dive, didn't you? Mm-hmm. Did you let him win? No. You let him win to make him feel feel better. I get it. Sometimes we do that. I get it. I understand. <laughs> I get it. I, it's okay. It's okay. You wanted to let him have one day that he could win. Everyone, every squirrel finds it not one time. Remember that. <laughs> anyway. So here's a fun story. 
going to wrestling school. <laughs> By the way, if you ever go to wrestling school, please listen to me when I tell you, don't do what I with this right here. Okay. I now I am someone who likes to be organized and I like to have everything already ready to go. I always mm-hmm. pack my bag, I have all my stuff ready to go. That's always how I am. Yeah. Well, one day I, I had practice and I had to run. This is going back. Uh, well, I was I was actually running a wrestling seminar. So I was coming back as Jazz Fitness. I was a bad guy. But regardless of that, I had to run this class of teaching all these young wrestlers how to do different things, right? And I had everything packed. So I thought I have my elbow pads, my knee pads, everything's ready to go. And I get to the arena. I didn't pack my singlet. I had my jeans on. I said, you know, Triple H wrestles in jeans. Other guys fight in jeans. I've been doing this forever. I can do this in jeans too. Don't wrestle in jeans. Yeah. I went to go in front of this class. I've done this. I've done... You know, I usually have shorts or 700 other things in this bag. But this one particular time, not one singlet in there. I don't know how this happened. So I decided it was a good idea. I'm going to do this and teach these kids how to do this in these jeans like Triple H or these other guys do. No problem. Until I took my first bump and split the jeans within the first bump. And I still had to go for another hour in the practice with split jeans. Yeah, yeah. And there was a whole class. Now, mind you, we also had at the same place we did the school, there was a hockey gym. It was a roll rink. And people were playing hockey in the rink part where our ring was. And yeah, let's just say... Yeah, bottom line, don't wrestle in jeans. Remember yeah. that. Because yeah. um <laughs> that that that's not one that I like to remember, but it's one that I'm always reminded about, trust me. <laughs> so that was a fun story. Now, out of curiosity, that being said, do you know the difference between a good guy and a bad guy in wrestling? Oh uh, yeah. In wrestling, what do you think you would be, a heel or a face? A heel, by the way, if you don't know the term, is a bad guy. A face is a good guy, obviously. Short for baby. Which one would you be? The face. I think you are, too. And you have been a face. That's that's pretty much what you are, (laughs) which is a good thing. I've been both. (laughs) Do you think it's easy or harder to be a baby face? Um, I've been doing this for so long, so uh, I feel like it's kind of easy. It but, is. Um... <laughs> awesome. So, did you know that you have shirts coming? <laughs> I have shirts. Did you know you have shirts coming? No. You didn't? Oh, did I spoil surprises? Whoops. Anyway, well, keep an eye on the mailbox. <laughs> you have shirts coming. Thank you. Now you have a new shirt. Yeah. Darn it. Oh, well. You'll be cool. <laughs> anyway, you got shirts coming. Surprise. Uh, right. But you don't have, I'm not going to tell you about the other surprise you have coming. So that I'm not going to tell you because you they don't, no one knows you any of that. So there you go. I'm going to guess it. You're going to guess it? What are you going to guess? Um, uh, um, one of those things that you wrestle in, uh, like, what are the things I wrestle in? Yeah, but you wrestle in. I forgot the name. Singlet. Do you have a singlet? You must have a singlet. Yeah. Do you? What do you think? Uh, being someone who also has worn singlets, what do you think about wearing a singlet? Do you like wearing a singlet or no? It's okay. Um, I feel like in wrestling matches, mm-hmm. it'll be kind of good. If you were to wrestle, right, 
what would you wear if you were a pro wrestler? What would you like to wear? Um, would you wear maybe, so? Go ahead. Maybe like a singlet or something that's not um, because some some are uh, like wrestlers, not pro wrestlers, but um, other wrestlers. Mm-hmm. They would have these shorts and this long shirt. Mm-hmm. You just get tied up in it, bro. Agreed. Agreed. I agree. Um, that that's kind of gets dangerous. So, you would you consider your, would you wear something like more like what John Cena would wear, or would you wear something more like what Randy Orton wears, or would you wear something like I don't know who else is there. Um, who did you say you liked? Well, you obviously know what a singlet is. So, what do you think you'd? What do you think you prefer rest fighting in? If you like, what if you were like, it would say Cena, Orton, and Kurt Angle. You know, who Kurt Angle is right. So, which one of those outfits is best for Big E? Meaning you, not the other Big E. Who, by the way, yeah. is a fan of Big E. By the way. <laughs> um. By the way, he shouts you out. <laughs> I would say something like maybe like something that John Cena has, maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, Getcha. Smart. A lot of people wear that. I've had we've had this debate in our house, so I get it. (laughs) I've I've had to wear singlets, and when I was in high school, I was on the swim team too. Uh, You think the singlet's bad? Right, being on the swim team, that's not even that's even less flattering than the singlet is, trust me. Yeah. Back then I was in shape. That's a good thing. You had to be in shape to be a good swimmer. Do you like to swim? Uh yeah. Cool. You know, when I used to work out, one of my favorite things after swimming, after uh working out was going for a swim afterwards because after I got done working out. Going for a swim and taking a dip in the pool would like have everything heal quicker. So tip to you. Mm-hmm. So if you ever want to, um, you know, let you know feel better after a good workout, going for a swim afterwards is good for your muscles and stuff like that. You'll relax more. So fun trivia. Keep yourself healthier longer. Yeah. Trust me, I know. <laughs> um, cool stuff. All right. Good times. Good times. All right. So usually what I like to also do is have people, you know, tell, shout people out and plug whatever they want to plug. So, Big E, who do you want to shout out? Um, Tom Spallon. Cool. That's my uh, boxing coach. Um, been with me for uh, five years. Um, cool. cool. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Awesome stuff. Probably your mom and dad too, right? Yep. A family. Yeah. Friends. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How important is how awesome is it to have your family there to support you? It's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Awesome. Excellent. It seems they're awesome people. And I think you're very lucky and it's good to have that. Not everyone is as lucky, you know. <laughs> and that's awesome. And that's why you're going to be golden. Cool stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, I know that it is getting late where you are, and you have a fight. You got a whole tournament to do tomorrow, yeah. and a lot of uh, people you got to go and beat up on and do the pull the Brock Lesnar on a lot of people tomorrow. So uh, you had fun. This is a good yeah. time, right? Awesome. Mm-hmm. Better than you thought it was going to be, right? Yeah, at first I'm like, oh, I was, so, I was so nervous. You were nervous? This? Yeah. Out of curiosity. Now, here's a question I always like to ask people. Hmm. This is a weird question. But when I reach out to people, it's because I believe in them. Because I think you're going to be awesome. It's legit. I do think you're awesome. But when I originally said, hey, how would you like to do this show? Well, then you've seen what I've done. What are your, like, do you like watching yourself doing that stuff? Or yeah. do you like, this is just another guy who just thinks that I'm good or whatever? Well, I like watching it. Yeah. Cool. Cool. 
Awesome stuff. And uh, cool. So you, you're excited about coming back in 2024 on our show? Yep. Excellent. And what are people going to be expecting in 2024? Um, a steel chair. Well, you've done that anyway. <laughs> awesome yeah. stuff. All right, awesome stuff. All right, man. So is there anything else you want to shout out? Anything else you want to say? By the way, you're you're doing fantastic. You are a superstar. So keep that up. Um and um, yeah, I told I did I think I passed along all the messages I had, except for uh yeah, Big E wanted me to shut you out. Randy Orton told me he doesn't want to face you. Uh, okay, that's the question. So all the flourishing maneuvers from wrestling, what's your favorite? My favorite move? Yeah, what's the what's your favorite move in pro wrestling? The, if you could do one move in the tournament tomorrow, what would it be? Suplex. Suplex. My favorite. I like suplexes too. I, I actually suplexed a kid in a wrestling match. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what it's for. That's good. Did you take in the suplex city? Yeah. I've seen you do it. <laughs> Actually, you have a really nasty rear naked choke where you pick the guy up into a suplex and just start choking him out. I don't know if you've seen it, but I have it. It's brutal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so keep that up. All right. Well, you got to get ready for your tournament tomorrow. And I, we wish you the best of luck. Did you have fun? You're excited. You're geared up. You're fired up. Yep. Look how look how pumped he is, folks. See this kid. Don't let him fool you. Dangerous right there. Look at the Mohawk. All I get to say is Chuck Liddell, Hawk, Animal, Biggie, Elijah Furton. All right. The King of Bling, Elijah Furton. Did you have a blast or what? Yeah. Awesome. Well, we had a blast having you. You've done a fantastic job. And you're uh, going to be, I already said multiple times, you're going to be a future UFC champion. I honestly think you could pretty much do anything you wanted to because you're a hard worker, you're dedicated, and you have a lot of respect. That I respect. And keep that up. I'm proud of you. Thank you for hiring me on your show. Now, the other question is, are you wanting to, would you come back to this show again since you've had such a fun time today? Yeah. You think you'd come back? Awesome. Well, I'm not going to tie you up because you have a tournament to do tomorrow and you need proper rest and sleep and all that fun stuff. And you probably want to get ready to do the suplexes tomorrow. So, my friend, I want to say thank you. And is there any parting words you want to say to anyone else? Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. And we're proud of you. Keep up the great work. Tell your parents they're doing a great job. And... We'll be in touch. May all your dreams come true, bud. You have a great <laughs> night. And best of luck tomorrow. Thank you. All right. Thank peace, you. brother. You're very welcome. Bye. Bring the bling. All right. All right. Peace, bro. See you. <laughs> all right. So we let him go, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, that is Biggie. Elijah Furton. Let's give him a round of applause. That young man is going to have a future that is bar none, one of the best out there. I want to say thank you to Big E for taking time to come on. I want to say thank you to his parents for who are fantastic at everything they do. And Biggie Elijah Ferton is an absolute juggernaut. Good luck to everyone tomorrow. May all your dreams come true from the F World Headquarters podcast. I am the F World icon, Sean Jazz Stevens. And you could find more about Biggie Elijah Ferton on his um his um social media at elijah furton on instagram or you can watch him on icons of the f4l on our show on youtube may all your dreams come true everyone enjoy your weekend thank you biggie elijah furton best of luck tomorrow 
and peace from the F World Headquarters podcast. Peace, everybody. Play that music, Bertram. <laughs>